Hi there, it's been Hustle, and in this Final Cut Pro tutorial, I just really wanted to focus on a few tips for navigating around the timeline. So we have a very rough um, edit down on the timeline here, and I just really wanted to talk about zooming in and zooming out in a few different ways on the timeline. So the first way to actually zoom in and out of the timeline, to navigate the timeline, is to come to this small little speech bubble that we have here across on the right-hand side in the middle, just above our playhead. And actually, I've got my audio monitors showing here, um, which you may not have, and those are shown or toggled on and off by clicking this little button um, here. I'm just going to turn them off for the moment so we can see a little bit more real estate on the timeline itself. So if we click this little speech bubble, we can see we've got some options for zooming in. So we're zooming in eventually down to a frame by frame visual of the timeline uh, down here. So you can see when I hover over one frame, it's becoming that lighter gray. So we're really super zoomed in but normally you'll want to be a little bit more zoomed out so we'll zoom out a little bit there and then the other option we have for zooming in and zooming out the timeline is zooming in and out of the height of the timeline now most of the time i like to keep my clip height reasonably big it lets me see the audio waveform especially if i'm working with dialogue which is not the case with this kind of noisy surf beach footage what you'll see when you have dialogue when you're zoomed in um, is the the gaps or pauses and that kind of will help you to edit any dialogue tracks that you're you're working with so the other options that we have here as well um, are these different options for displaying more or less information about different parts of the track so toggling through from just showing the audio waveform so no video information there which i rarely use um, i normally want to kind of see what's in each of the clips um, and then a half and half audio waveform and video thumbnail, and then different kind of variations on that same theme. So I think I'm normally using this third option along here. Um, and then we go to the full video frame again, which I rarely use because I normally want to see that audio waveform, even if it's just to know that I've turned the audio off or muted it in different parts, but I'm definitely editing my audio a lot in conjunction with my video when I'm working. So unless you're just working with a music track, where you've kind of laid it across the bottom, then you'll normally want to see that audio waveform. The other option um, is this option, which just shows you this very thin strip for each track, okay? And this is useful, I guess, if you're dealing with a lot of layers and you want to zoom in and out of those layers. So we'll jump back to this option that I use a lot. And I want to show you a couple of the shortcuts that you can use to zoom in and zoom out. So the first one is Command and Plus, which I use a lot. So if we position the playhead, um, and I'm using scrubbing turned on over here on the right hand side so if i position this red bar here when i do command and plus it's actually going to zoom in at that particular point in the timeline so it's a really useful way of kind of zooming right in on a particular spot of the timeline that you want to focus in on so here i'm using command plus to zoom in and command and minus to zoom out and the other option we have for zooming on the timeline in terms of shortcuts or one other option is shift command and plus or minus which will allow you to zoom in and out of the height of your timeline okay so we can zoom out and zoom in and this is particularly useful if you are adding things like graphic layers so for instance if we have some titles uh, stacked up or layered on top of our timeline we might have titles kind of coming on at different points in time which means you can end up with a timeline that looks something like this where the the titles are stacked up in different spots and we're just making a very rough example here but really the focus is on the timeline. And if you're zoomed in on that timeline, then it becomes hard to see sometimes all the different stacks of layers. And what you'll find is that at that point in time, if you want to move around um, without zooming in or zooming out, then you need to use this scroll bar to the right to kind of scroll up and down. Or you can use the scroll wheel on your mouse if you have an old school mouse like me. Or if you have one of the more recent mouses, you can use the two finger touch to actually scroll up and down um, in the timeline, okay? And the same goes for moving left and right. So we can just drag left and right. And if you're using a touchpad on a laptop, then you'll also have some different options for pinching into the, the timeline to actually zoom in and zoom out the timeline as well. But I find the, the command, shift command, plus and minus options useful. They give me a lot of control. The other shortcut that I use a lot, um, because I'm often working very zoomed into my timeline, is shift and z and that allows me to zoom my entire timeline so i see the whole thing on screen so right from the beginning to the end however long my timeline is it's going to show me the whole thing so to recap the shortcuts i use a lot are command plus to zoom in 
in time to the timeline, uh, shift, command and plus to zoom the height of the timeline, and then also when we're zoomed in, shift and Z to zoom to the entire timeline. And all the time when you're zooming in and zooming out, as you're kind of scrubbing, and all the time as you're zooming in and zooming out, as you're scrubbing along your timeline, the timeline will always zoom in or focus in on that point where the, the playhead um, is located. So as we zoom in here, we're always going to stay focused on the point in time where we've positioned our playhead um, or the scrubber bar at that particular point in time. And another thing to kind of keep in mind as well, be mindful of when you're zooming in and out of the timeline, is just the time code up here at the top. So as we're zooming in and zooming out, just keep an eye on how many seconds there are between different parts of the clip. So here we're going from 35 seconds to 37 and a half seconds, so two and a half seconds are between those two points. Um, and obviously you can see here that we're editing at 60 frames per second, which is the frame rate of the footage that we're editing. And we can tell that by the fact that as we scrub forward from 37 to 38, that we go up to 58, 59, and then 38. Okay, so you can see the time code here in hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. And that's an important thing to, to learn as well as you're zooming in and out of the timeline and um, how the timeline is, is structured um, in that way. And the duration of any clips we have selected as well will show up in yellow in the middle here when we select those clips. So you can see this clip that I have selected at the moment is 11 seconds and 35 frames of the whole 1 minute and 15 seconds of this entire edit that I'm working on. So we get lots of information in the timeline. It's worth keeping an eye on the different visual indicators that you have in the timeline. In this bar here as well um, for things like the scrubbing for video and audio and snapping as well um, and then as we mentioned at the start of this tutorial the zooming in and zooming out of that timeline as well so i hope that's been useful um, it's always useful to learn a little bit more about the, the kind of nuts and bolts of how final cut pro works and if you have any questions for me then just leave them in the comments below and i look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial